Welcome everybody to the IEP Live Learn Lunch. I'm really excited about today's session, which is different to some of the sessions we've had recently. We've got Fran joining us from 4OC, who is going to take us through a practical guide to mobilising on contracts. So with no further ado, I will fill you in a little bit later on other Live Learn Lunches we've got coming up in the future. But with no further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Fran, who's going to take us through today's session. Over to you, Fran. Thanks very much, Alan. Um, and thanks everyone for joining. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully this will work okay. Um, so I think we're good to go. So I've yeah. tried to structure the session today uh, as much as possible as being a practical guide. Um, there are some elements there that be relevant to different roles. Some are relevant to senior roles in the organization. Some are relevant to frontline teams. So I'll try and cover a broad spectrum and hopefully give you, give you a flavor. But do encourage, I do encourage you to ask some questions. What I'll do is, I'll pause at certain stages and Helen will, will help uh, just flag any questions that we've got. Um, I'm not the best at multitasking across different screens, but if I, if I do pick up a question as I'm going, I'll, I'll jump on it as well. Um, so I'm gonna talk you through a little bit of context of where we're at in the market currently. I'm sure most of you will be aware of it, but um, some of you I think work in different parts as well. So, so just to give you a flavor of what's going on, um, and it's quite a broad market, but there's some things that are, are more pertinent on the back of COVID-19, obviously, as, as you'll be aware. I'll give you a flavor of what the key mobilization stages are. So people talk about implementation or mobilization. Uh, it's effectively the same thing when we talk about it. Um, but implementation tends to cover across a number of stages, mobilization being right up into, into go live. Um, but I'll, I'll fill, fill that in a little bit to give you a bit more background. I'm going to pick as we go through some of the key things that we think are important. Uh, from a from a mobilization perspective, what are the critical dependencies? Um, you know, some some pitfalls as well. We'll pick out. And I, as I mentioned, I'll try and talk about if you're a frontline uh, 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 member of staff, how can you get involved? What does it mean to you? Um, you know, it's often something that sits over another part of the business, but actually, many of you may be pulled into to be involved at different stages. There's a lot of investment decisions involved, particularly the big programs at the moment. So I'll touch on that. And then I've got a number of points I'm going to cover on. Uh, when when you've actually won as an organization a contract. So we'll walk, we'll walk that through as well. So a little bit about myself and the organization I work with. Um, I work for 4OC. We've been working in the in the sector. I know the sector is for uh, eight years now. Um, previously, most of us were operators. So uh, we, and most of us in the sector itself. Um, overall, we've mobilized and I've been involved in over half a billion worth of contracts. Um, and you can see a list of them on there that we've been involved in, including outside of the country. I've also done some work in Germany as well. Um, and I've, I've run the contracts as an operations director as well. So up, up to a 40 million level on that. So I've got a, a mixture of experience on uh, operating, running a, running a business, running a contract, running contracts, and then also mobilizing them, uh, which has been in, in my last few years. Um, and we do a lot of, as we're in with organizations, we do a lot of work around business improvements and uh, and working with senior teams and strategy as well particularly now in in, in response to COVID-19 and how organizations are dealing with that the knock-on for the sector being a lot more money is coming into the sector um, and that has meant that organizations have got to ramp up have got to right size their their central functions for example and got to uh, think about what their strategy is and a little bit about myself I think I think I'm the only Irish German operator in the sector um, so I'm hoping we've done, finished on time and I'll, I'll try to stay away from the beer, which, which I can give the other stereotype on. Um, so, yeah, so I'm sure there's other things that people uh, on the call know about me. I see a few familiar faces, uh, but I'll, I'll not open that up. Um, so, right, let's move in a little bit more on context. So the, what's happening in the sector at the moment is that we are coming out of a, low, a period of lower demand for services. That's a positive thing for the, for the, for the industry or for the, for the economy, in a sense, because uh, as in where they were, because more people were employed, it was it was a really positive period for people, and that's that's part of the cycle of this industry. When there are difficult times, when there's a lot larger unemployment or predicted unemployment, more money comes in, and actually there's more demand for services. And I know the IEP has been working really hard to professionalize the sector uh, in readiness uh, for for this um, I suppose uplift in activity um, on the back of everything that's been happening in recent years. Uh, what has also been the knock-on of that is there is a really short bidding time scale for most of the programs that are coming out. So organizations are having to really drag people from within the, the, the teams, invest money at risk to get a bid back in a very short period. Uh, and the restart program is the big one at the moment um, that, that people have had to do that uh, on. 
There's also been a lot of changes around probation, for example, where contracts were due to come out and then were pulled and there's lots of changes there. So it's been a little bit of a state of flux and, and a lot of activity, quite a bit of um, pressure, I would say, put into the teams uh, in, the, in central functions and organizations in the sector. Um, the knock on of that is there's also short mobilization timescales. Um, so on, on the restart program, I'll, I'll use that as a predominant example because that's awarded uh, in 10 days or so, 10, 10 or 12 days. And um, there's a really short mobilization window for that, nine weeks, um, if everything uh, goes to plan. Um, in, in that scenario, you have to do work at risk. You have to do work before you know you've won the, the contract. And that's obviously a, a challenging situation for organizations as well. Be they, be they small or large, uh, it's the same knock on. And there's a huge recruitment implication as well around that across the country. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through. And these are programs of scale. Um, there, there is a lot of money going into the sector at the moment. Um, it's, it's back to kind of work program level from, from whatever it is now, 10 years ago. Um, and the, the structure of the contracts are relatively conventional. Um, they're turned around pretty quickly. There isn't a huge amount of, of innovation in how they're being tendered. There's a bit more focus on customer service standards and some other things like that. But essentially the core journey is very similar. Um, and and there's, again, there's a knock-on of, of that in terms of mobilization, positive in that people have done a lot of it before and have things stood up, but there's also a challenge around how do we, how do we innovate uh, in the sector and, and where, where, how far can we go, I suppose, on these programs. Um, and there is the economic uncertainty with regards to coming out of lockdown. So we are hearing lots of different things around forecasts. You've got Brexit in the back, backdrop as well. Um, but it may be that there is a, a really rapid recovery, which means the performance in these programs may happen early on. And actually afterwards, the, the number or the volume of participants may drop rapidly. We just don't really know. There's forecasts going on, there's lots of variations on it. That puts even more risk into organizations that are bidding for this and how they uh, structure their cost models. Um, and I think I've touched probably on, on, on the impact on, on a lot of these um, already as we've walked through it. And I'll pick them up as, as we go through. I think the, the, the bit that we keep saying when we're in supporting organizations is you've got to keep the, the day one service delivery really front, front of mind. So will you be able to offer a consistent service for the end user, for the customer from day one? That's what commissioners want to see. That's what it should be delivering, right that it should be delivering that. But there is a really small window of time to, to, to do that. So how do you compromise in areas if you need to without undermining that journey from day one? So that's a little bit of context for you. So this is, some of this will be pretty basic to some of you. You may use different terms, um, but I just want to give you a quick flavor. What are the key mobilization stages or implementation stages in, in a program where a new contract win? First of all, you've got pre-bid planning. So you bring in uh, a number of different parties in an organization to understand whether you can actually deliver uh, the program. Uh, is there an appetite to bid? You'll go through your pre-qualification, et cetera, but there should be some planning part of that. So can you implement in the timescales have you got the capacity resources to do it? Have you got the, 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 the investment or the appetite to invest in advance of winning a contract? The bigger the contract, the bigger the risk is. And also you need to have a flavor from the commissioner as to whether there'll be any uh, contractual restrictions that may challenge that. That happened previously with probation coming out, a lot of challenges as an example, um, but it's less so I suppose at the moment, it's more, it's more fundamental um, investment in, in the program and, and, and building that bid. Then once you've done that pre-bid planning, you decide, okay, we're gonna invest in this bid. You get a budget together for that. During that bid, you'll have to submit or develop a mobilization plan or implementation plan. Uh, and in recent years, there's been more focus on what the response is to give confidence that that is a real plan, that you've got the resources to deliver it. Um, I think in, in previous years, um, it was probably less looked at and uh, organizations probably go, we'll figure it out. And there may have been a longer lead in time to, to run the mobilization, which still does happen in certain contracts. Um, but I think now, particularly in these short turnarounds, there's, there's a lot of focus on giving some confidence and guarantees that you'll be able to deliver um, the, uh, the, the mobilization plan that is in the bid and that you can deliver from day one. You then submit your bid and there's various forms of how that bidding process goes, initial, initial bids, uh, best and final offers, there's dialogue, there's all sorts of things in that where from a mobilization perspective, you need to justify what you're doing <coughs> or you're planning to do. Then you get to pre-award. So once you've submitted your final offers, you, you've responded to the tenders, 
um, there is a period of time where you don't know whether you've won anything. Now, uh, the organizations that are uh, cash rich, I suppose, will take advantage of that period to really, really get ready. Um, and so when the award is, and look at the different scenarios in terms of awards, if we win one of this, two of that, a bit of this, um, they work those scenarios out. And then when the, when the button is hit and, and hopefully your organization wins, they're ready to go. You've got governance up in place, up and running. You've already cleared some of those critical um, uh, milestones. You've probably started work on your IT solution. You've started recruitment, things like that. Again, I'll talk about these a little bit more as we go through. Um, that, 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 that period is really important. And if you're on the back foot during that period, uh, it's going to be a challenge in short timescales to get back uh, on, on the right track. Uh, then you get into mobilization. So once you've been awarded, you have whatever that period of time is to, to mobilize. You'll have a structured plan. You'll have governance in place. Um, and then you run through whatever project management methodology you, you use uh, to, to deliver against that plan. Um, the, the, we tend to sort of end mobilization at go live. So once you've got the go live, you then go to your stabilization period. And again, there's multiple phrases for this. MTT is a word that, or a phrase that's used in mobilization, transition, transformation. Um, but particularly I'll talk about this as stabilization, just to, just to call it in so people understand it. This is a period normally around three months or so, depending on the contract, where you're making sure you're ironing out all the bits that weren't quite perfect when, you, when you've gone live. You're really assuring yourself that the organization is delivering what was committed to delivering and that everything is running smoothly. And then you can pass it over to business as usual so that you can make sure that um, there's a clean handover. People know what actions are continuing. They take responsibility and that should uh, move things forward. So I'll do a few more slides and then I'll just uh, pause for, uh, for questions. Uh, I haven't seen any come through yet, but Helen can jump on as we go through. So what are the things that we'd recommend doing in terms of early planning? So uh, I think I've got about six items on here. So if possible, you try and design out your, some of these may be really obvious by the way, Design your delivery solution to as detailed a level as you can. So for the bid process, if you can really invest time in it to nail down the detailed handoffs, the processes, the usage of the IT system, the requirements, do that as much as possible during the bid. You don't want to be taking a fly on some of that detail and then coming back to it and realizing something doesn't work internally. So as much as possible, um, really working that through. That does tend to happen in most organizations. What doesn't happen, I suppose, is getting into the detailed standard operating procedures Probably there's a couple of areas if you've been involved in a bid uh, recently that are that are themes. Normally it's things like with employer services, how's that's going to work? How's that going to work in your organization? How's the handoff work? The IT system, the requirements are they fully nailed down? Those types of areas tend to uh, tend to be left a little bit in terms of the detail, and then there's a rapid turnaround. Same with business reporting requirements. Those sorts of things tend to happen a little bit later, and ideally should be covered early on. Be ready with your implementation structure. So how are you going to run it? What governance have you got? Get a template ready. Get your work stream leads identified. Um, get a critical set of milestones laid out and get that running before award is, 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 uh, is issued. So you've already got a rhythm going. Uh, we've seen this work really well with a couple of organizations that we've worked with um, where there's been some development work on IT, for example, that needed to happen early on. And they decided we'll, we'll do that at risk. But what we'll do is we'll focus on the areas that will benefit the wider organization as well and do those first. That worked really well. And then the, the rhythm was there in terms of the, the rigor from, a, from an implementation perspective or mobilization perspective. And that then just folded in once it was awarded, right? We just keep going what we're doing. Uh, if you have to try and set it up really quickly, it does, it does take a little while. Um, and then involve committed resources. When I say committed resources, those, or, those resources that are gonna be there all the way through, if possible, what you don't want, and again, an ideal world, is a bunch of people come in for the bid and then they disappear and they, or they just hand it over to somebody else. You want some consistency there as much as possible so that you can, you can, um, you can easily start to roll into the practical activities. It's almost handing solution, the solutioning over to the implementation. Um, what you do often happen when you have operators involved in the, in the bids, um, that it's a challenge if you're in the business already to, uh, to come up with new ideas because you're used to doing the way the, the way you do things now. So that, that piece needs a little bit more time to help understand how you can pull out that creativity uh, within those forums if you're going to involve people um, at all levels, um, which you should do. And again, I'll come back to that in terms of engaging the front line. Uh, cost modeling is very important. You've got to put cost models into the, into the, into the bid anyway. 
Um, but what you um, what you really need to focus on is making sure you've got enough in there for your mobilization as well. So often that's just a number that's dropped in there um, in the cost model. You really need to kick the tires as an organization on, on whether you'll have enough resources to support that through, to support the mobilization. You'll have internal people who'll be bringing in some additional resources and expertise and, and specifics maybe, maybe budgeted for. But actually, what does it mean in terms of mobilization? Do you have the right capacity? It's really about looking at resources. It tends to be in that space when it comes to implementation. Um, commissioners vary on what time they, you know, they, 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 do, they offer, I suppose, for mobilization to happen. Some are more understanding that it will be a phased rollout. Uh, some are less so, and DWP certainly are, are, are less so um, uh, at the moment. Uh, they need rapid turnaround and they need, to, uh, they need things to be running from day one. So it, you really need to understand where they're at on that front. And that will fold into how they assure the mobilization as well. Um, and you know, really obvious thing to say is don't commit to something you don't, you know, you won't be able to deliver. Um, you know, often bids go in, and then there's all hell breaks loose uh, once an award is, is issued because they haven't really expected to win it, or uh, or they haven't really thought through how they're then going to deliver it. Um, it. Tends to happen less now, but it still happens in small contracts, I would say. So just really make sure that you can deliver it. Don't put things into the bid that that just look nice uh, and aren't a reality. And um, that can have just massive reputational damage impact uh, for everybody moving on. So let me just let me just stop um, there. I'll just pause and see if anyone has any questions. I know Helen's asking the, the chat to see if there are any. Um, if not, we can save them for the end. It's fine. We will have time. Let you digest. I'll take a glass of water one way. Yes, I'll keep on not, moving. I'll, yeah, yeah, so we've not had any questions yet, but I think it's because they're taking it all in at this stage, Fran. Yeah, no problem. I'm trying to cover as much as I can. So uh, yeah, I'll let you guys digest it as, as we go through and then, then share. Um, okay, so if I'm on the front line, um, so I'm sure we've got uh, colleagues on the call at the moment that, that are in uh, advisor roles or in different roles that are interacting with the, the, the frontline teams. How can it affect you? So at bid stage, um, it really is good to involve frontline resources to, to help with design. Uh, you know who is going to be uh, impacted by the service. You know that what they need, you can access their feedback as well. And it's really important to keep um, people from all different levels engaged in new bids. What's the worst thing that happens in an organization is when you just hear about, we just won something, don't really have any context um, and don't know whether you can get involved or should you have been involved or not. So good communication sort of flows around that as well. Um, but it's really important to get groups together to, to feed into design and to try and think uh, outside of what their normal uh, working day is. And it helps their um, uh, their day to day anyway, even if they don't move across into that new contract. Um, the, I suppose it's more an awareness thing. Um, operation managers will be uh, distracted. Uh, sorry, the type of there, but they will be distracted if they're involved in the bid. Um, they may be harder to reach. Um, you know, they, they, they generally their diaries are packed up, particularly with everybody on virtual uh, meetings at the moment. Um, so you may have to function a little bit more independently during a really big bidding phase. So understanding who's involved in a bid, what the impact is and where that might affect your day to day is, is important for you to consider. And you may be asked to nominate customers to test the model um, or to input into the design of the model. That's absolutely good practice to do that. Um, and so, you know, it, often what happens is we, we'll, we'll look to the, the frontline teams to identify who would be good or you may have forums in place already to do that. Um, to make sure that we're getting that, that uh, feedback involved into design as well. When you get into mobilization and then further on to stabilization, again, there is a, uh, an impact on the operational managers, particularly where there is, and if you look at restart, there's a huge, and Jets recently was the same, short time scale. You're recruiting a lot of people if you win on it. There's lots of practical support needed around looking at CVs, sifting through them, setting up interviews, attending interviews. Uh, be the operational um, input into that. A lot of organizations are putting recruitment teams in place or expanding teams, but they still need to have operational input because otherwise it's very difficult to own the contract as an operation after it's, after it's won or, or own your, your staff that are recruited in. Um, the uh, the uh, 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 induction piece as well, obviously you might be asked to, to feed into that in terms of any resourcing uh, gaps that might be in place. Um, or, or so I should say in, in terms of I sort of bringing to life your, your perspective on that, but also in terms of covering resource gaps, you might be asked to backfill in uh, either during that induction period 
or to to be a point of excellence or a mentor for individuals. There's lots of different things like that that happen naturally when there's a transition from a for, for a new contract, a big contract coming in. Organizations like to bring in some of the, the, the expertise, obviously, from existing delivery to help support that. And it might be that people are seconded over for a period, et cetera. That's all about assuring that day one and making sure the team gets up and running and, and is, is oiled. And you might want to apply for a role in the new contract. That's, uh, that's obviously uh, of interest and, and it gives you a chance to have a look at it during the early stages and see whether, whether it's something, something for you. Um, just touching on in investment decisions, uh, this is probably more at a senior level, but it's good to, to have context. Again, I know we've got a mix of people on the call. Really important for organizations to decide what you're willing to invest in the, co in the cost of sales. So when I say cost of sale, that's really the, the risk involved in bidding for a new piece of work. It is expensive to, to put the senior people involved in, in bidding for a contract. There's a, lot, there's a lot of people that get pulled into it. If you look at Restart, that was really expensive bidding process, albeit, albeit a compacted one. Um, so that needs to be signed off up front with the senior team. Is it aligned with the corporate aims, objectives, all of the, the standard processes that we'd expect to see in an organization to get that signed off. Um, but also to look at one post bid, what are you looking to put uh, money into? And we I touched on it earlier, we really recommend investing in areas that would benefit the wider business. So if even if you lose, you'll have moved on or improved areas that will uh, that will benefit other contracts or other parts of the business. IT is often a good example. If you've got an existing case management system, for example, and you you uh, improve certain elements to that, so the assessment tools or whatever it might be, look at the elements that will benefit wider. So if you're going to fix something, you're going to improve something, um, pick the things that will benefit the wider contracts first and try and do those. There's obviously critical things you want to do early anyway, but if you can try and look at it from that perspective, and um, the other areas that you need to, to, to really get cracking on uh, pre-award ideally is uh, recruitment. Best case uh, or best practice we see is all of the uh, all of the staff have uh, potential staff have been recruited uh, to, to the point of uh, offers on the basis of award. Um, if you can get to that point and you've got a bank of people ready to go, then that's a brilliant scenario to be in. We're trying to look at the sector being more mature in that about if you don't win the contract then sharing those with the other provider in the area for example i know some organizations are having that discussion that's a really positive area to to focus on but the earlier you get moving on recruitment it's all about people ultimately these contracts it's all about having the best people to to support um support the end users um the systems piece depending on how far you're going with it um if you need to do anything uh, fundamental in terms of development that needs to happen earlier we invariably that it takes longer than expected and is more complicated. Um, I touched on the detailed service design, try and get that nailed down as far as possible also early on. Um, so there's no ambiguity in terms of roles, responsibilities, et cetera. And supply chain, um, there's a you know huge um, selection of supply chain partners that will be involved in all the programs across um, across all you know, justice, skills, employability, et cetera. Um, making sure that they're positively engaged with, they're kept up to speed, and their uh, readiness activity is moving forward. That's really, really critical uh, to, to, to start on the right foot on. And ultimately what you're doing is looking at a financial versus delivery performance risk. If you don't invest up front, the quality of your delivery will be negatively impacted. You'll be putting workarounds in, you'll be putting manual processes in just to, to keep the wires uh, tied together. Um, but, but you may fundamentally impact uh, the performance from the initial stages of the contract. That's obviously what the commissioners is, find important. When we talk about performance, it's not just getting people into work or, or you know, whatever it might be in you know, learning aims or whatever it might be in your, in your sector. Um, it is about the quality of that service up front. So uh, the, the, the service standards are really important um, as well as the, the outcomes. So starting on the right foot is critical. Um, I'll just pause it. I think Mark has, has dropped a question in there um, around uh, employer services being left. I, I did I did mention that that earlier. Um, it's definitely one where not just being left so late. I would say it's one where the the roles responsibilities around it can be confused. So uh, it's kind of yeah, well they're doing that, aren't they? And we'll just pick up from here. And, and or how are we coordinating those larger opportunities? Or are we waiting for the opportunities to come to us? So I think there's lots within there 
that if you can have that conversation, nail down the handoffs, nail down how picks, who picks up what, how the process works early on, uh, that's really important. And then there is the activity itself. You want to start promoting early. Ideally, you've got existing delivery in that space, but you want to start promoting what you're doing early. You want to start uh, engaging with employers, bring them into design as well, uh, and be on the front foot. So I think it's a really val valid point. Um, on that. Uh, Laura, I'll come back to yours because I can't read that quickly. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll ask Helen to just have a look at your comments as, as we go. Um, so look, the next stage is what, uh, what you're on the winning team. So you've, you've won a bid, brilliant. Um, your organization's uh, in, in a good place, congratulations. Um, where should you be at this stage? So all the things I've talked about already, what, what should you have in place? Well, you should have a clear set of uh, requirements of delivery model. You should have a detailed plan with the work stream needs identified and bought into what they're going to do. And linked to that, governance should be set up. How are we going to run it? We're going to have a project board every week. We're going to have project teams doing X, Y, and Z. We'll manage it in this way. How do we escalate decisions? We're going to risk register. All of those sorts of things that are very standard project, uh, project management uh, components. Have them ready. They should be in place. Key investment decisions have been made. So you're not, you're not coming asking for an investment um, after go live to say, OK, we need to buy this IT system. That should be made in advance. You're anything that you've identified as a critical path activity, so a really important thing that you need to do before um, award, they should be on track, so you shouldn't be lagging on that uh, initial implementation plan. Um, and I keep saying around the customer's experience, you keep that at the heart of what you're doing. You're not making compromises uh, in advance of the award and, and on the back of it. Uh, and some of the things in, in terms of what next, uh, and, and this kind of is a flow on from that previous point, validate the plan. So do, you know, you've got everything in place, but be absolutely sure now that the commissioners may have come out with some clarifications around it. They may have changed the time scale. So you've got to validate that. Just double check everybody is, has got the capacity and is committed. A lot of people will say, yes, I can help. Um, I'll happily do it. And then they realize they don't have any time to do it and pass it on to somebody else. So you've got to validate that. I think and, and I mentioned the, the resources. You've got to really dial up your governance. You might've had a light touch in advance of awards. You've got to really move it into, um, full tilt governance and getting everyone involved that needs to be involved to, 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 to make decisions and move things forward. Um, and really have a look at your risks and what you're doing on them. So, um, you know, risk registers are something that are pulled together often at pace and quite a painful exercise to go through. But it's really important not to just leave them sat there. They need to be live. And so you need to know which risks you're really working on, your mitigations, where are you at with them? Uh, really important. And linked into that is tracking spend. So you should have a budget for, for mobilization. Um, make sure you track uh, what you're spending against it. It's quite easy to lose track on that. So um, you don't want to get in trouble with the senior leadership team uh, when you're finding out you're spending a lot more money than you plan to. Um, and questions really here. Do you have a can-do culture? Do you work collaboratively? You don't want to have teams working in silos and then not joined up. This is a, It's normally a really a team effort. Um, so anything you can do to get that really in place early on and foster that positive environment will be really beneficial for you. You want to build a little bit of fun in there. You don't want it to be too intense, but uh, you know people have to accept that it is a pretty pretty tough time often when it's a short time scale. What is important to the customer? Are you putting that in at the center of everything? I'm going to keep saying that. Um, what if you're making a decision? What is the impact on the customer's experience from day one? Keep asking that question. Uh, and do you have open engagement with your supply chain? I mentioned it earlier. Have you got that really positive? Um, relationship uh, it's not just that you're a you're a nice to have in the supply chain you're part of delivery you're one team um, and ha so have you got that set up and in place now you've got a good um, uh, a good set of communication I suppose that's going out with 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 your supply chain and and vice versa if you're in the supply chain with a prime how are you engaging with that prime organization and is that is that positive and, and are you able to have an open an open discussion on it Quick walk through in terms of the work stream structures. I'm just going to check time where we're at. Um, the, the different organizations have different ways of structuring this. So we just suggested on here a common set of work streams that we'd expect to see. I'll quickly explain what these are um, just as a flavor. But it, depending on what the contract is, certain things will be more important. It will be split out. Um, but you tend to have a set of milestones against each of these. So first of all, is project governance. And that's really about getting the governance up and running signing that off, getting your weekly sessions in place, what forums you need to have in, in place, and, and then clearing all of the collateral that's needed, risks and, risks and decisions, logs, and things like that. Um, the estate side, um, a big one for restart, uh, as an example, 
how uh, how are you going to set up that that on-site provision um it's opening up again now uh, on on the back of lockdown easing um so that's going to we think be or maintain uh, being a really important area with face-to-face -face still at the heart of, of, of what's been delivered although complemented a lot with digital now as we know um resourcing your what's your recruitment plan uh have you got how are you breaking up your different cohorts of recruitment and how are they going to be onboarded operations is a bit of a broad one it tends to cover are you how are you building your operational collateral so your standard operating procedures have you got a, um, a knowledge base or a guidance manual uh, induction material etc for the teams coming in what forms do you need all those sorts of things that are we deem to be quite operational elements and, and need operational input and ownership um, so that it starts well from day one. IT systems and hardware is pretty straightforward in terms of what it is, but very complex to do. First of all, you're buying all of your, your kits, uh, getting your infrastructure set up, uh, getting telephony sorted. Big delay is normally, do you need to get a phone line uh, in or an internet line connected? Um, that normally involves some work around from day one if there's a short time scale just with the the lead in time to get uh, new lines through BT or OpenReach or, or whatever that might be. And then you've got your applications that you, you will be putting in place, either using existing and developing them, customizing them or bringing new in with bolt-ons. There's all sorts that, that can fall into that. Definitely is a really critical area. Supply chain, I've talked about um, our work stream around that and, and helping, um, helping them set up and be ready for go live and kind of reflects all of the other work streams um, in a almost like a mini plan for each of those, depending on how big the contract is. Marketing, um, invariably you'll have some promotion activity that you'll want to do to launch the, the program. Uh, depending on if you have voluntary referrals in or they're mandated onto it, or it's a, pro you know, it's a program that's gonna, um, you know, in a prison, for example, or whatever, th th there'll be mixed approaches around marketing, um, but need to get that on board and nailed. So often if you look at DWP activity, it's sharing information with JCP and, 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 and getting that collateral together they can share with potential participants. Um, integration or engagement, and this this is more and more important. I think this is around engagement with local services. So it tends to be particularly important from an employer perspective, and also from a um, from, from supporting those more complex barriers, but also understanding the economic environment in that in that area. So you know, this will be joining uh, left boards, for example, which are which are obviously quite um, quite important at the moment, and making sure that you're uh, engaging with the local community to re-responding and what they need. And that's really, that's really important from a bid perspective. Um, you've got to be able to demonstrate that localism, um, but also from a practical perspective to access support and understand you know, what is happening in that region, uh, critical. And then we've got an open uh, point, which is around corporate. So there, there will be lots, depending on your structure, there'll be lots of, co lots of corporate teams or, or corporate services teams that may require activities that might be that you've got to uh, central uh, sir, uh, a customer services center, uh, contact, contact center that will need its own work stream that needs to be developed. You may have compliance. Um, you may have uh, you know other other governance structures that are in there or finance finance activities is often one as well to get all of the cost centers set up to get your management of expenses, all those sorts of things. So there may be a few others in there. We tend to group it together. But it depends on scale. Uh, and I suppose the other thing to 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 note on this is don't just have a mobilization plan to get to go live. Don't forget about having that stabilization plan, that transition plan out into normal business as usual. Um, that's that's really important as well. I'll zip through this in terms of uh, normal features of governance. Uh, we tend to find that a, a waterfall project management approach, Prince 2 type one, and, and it all needs to be customized to your organization, but that more structured uh, program management, uh, project management approach works best for these types of contracts because you've limited ability to be agile uh, in your design, you'll have done maybe some agile work at, uh, and some some of you will know about this or, or not know about it, but it's not, don't worry too much about it. You may do some of that in your design up front um, in the bidding, and it might, you may do it within your IT uh, work streams, but broadly, it's they, they tend to work better, these programs, uh, as having a print two type um, structure on it. These have each work stream with a lead, and they'll have a mini project team. Um, that they'll, depending on the scale again, that they'll they'll work with to move things forward. An implementation lead overall um, makes sense uh, for, for larger contracts. It might just be a project manager, it might be a more implementation director level, um, but that, that again can vary on scale. Um, they, they would all then, those key people would sit on implementation boards. Again, different phrase you can use at different stages. 
but they would they would sit together on a team and review progress and then there would be an escalation channel into the executive and executive steering group or senior leadership team for anything that needs to be escalated up the, the the senior team doesn't need to know everything that's going on and you don't want to restrict yourself on these types of of deliveries um by by having too much oversight uh, sometimes um so you've got to get the right balance there so you're not sat in meetings constantly not getting any work done um so really kicking that through before before contracts are awarded is important what is the right balance for your organization some are just naturally built that way and, and it works um others need to be a little bit more um a little bit more nimble in, in terms of how they, how they deliver it um and i've mentioned a few times around the structured project ladder being in place um so that you can you're keeping track of your decisions your actions uh, any risks that are going on and uh, are being mitigated um, and any other collateral really that needs to sit behind the project um, you know you'll have regular project update reports um, and then specifics around some of the some of the work streams themselves so that's all, all really important and i'm not going to get into this on, on this call but you know what tools are you using if you're a smaller organization you may have to fold into um, a tool that the prime is using in, in the supply chain uh, you may you may be used to using MS Project or Smartsheets or Excel or there's, there's numerous tools that are out there. But as, lo as long as that works okay in your organization, as long as you can share that with who needs to need to be able to access it or update it. Um, and I would suggest on, all, suggest on all of this, if at all possible, try and minimize how long that project plan can be. Make sure that everything in there is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a smart element. It is important. It's not just fluff that's added in there. Because it, it can be quite overwhelming the amount of activities you know seeing thousand thousand line uh, project plans and sometimes you just spend your life updating them so just getting that right balance you need to have the detail obviously but you just need to get the right balance as well and that's often we're bringing in um expertise who, who are or having your own pmo project management office that can manage it and take a bit of that weight off uh, is really important but appreciate that for small organizations that that can be a bit challenging um, I'll, I'll push on a couple of other elements here. Um, I think I've got two or three slides left, so I'll open it up at the end. It might be the easiest. Um, post go live. So you've you've gone live. You, let's hope um, you've got everything stood up, open the doors, everybody's ready to go. Um, what's really important is you're not going to get everything right. Don't don't beat yourself up with things that you know are not going to work perfectly. As long as you can protect the customer's experience, the end user's experience. Then that's okay. You know, there'll be wiring needed in the, in the IT systems. Um, there'll be, you know, there'll be forms that might be perfect. You might have a little bit of paper here and there, um, but you can wrap that up into what we call a hypercare period. So for two to three weeks, it tends to be after go live. You uh, you put some extra uh, focus around how staff are doing. Uh, get their feedback uh, quickly as to what's working, what's not working. Also from the customers. Um, address it really rapidly um, and uh, and then fold that into the training that you will deliver to any further cohorts to come in or run some refresher training so um it, it's it's a it's a really useful thing for staff to be able to go to uh, a set of experts so they can ask questions it's you know once you get into practical delivery it's where the questions always always happen um and then secondly if there are any of those key actions that are more practical actions that need to happen to fix something um, you can you can jump on it and have that really structured approach, uh, and that links to continued governance. You don't just go live and then say good luck, that's great. Um, you know, hope you deliver this really well. You should maintain that governance structure until you are happy that it can be handed over to business as usual. So, and everyone needs to sign off on that that they are happy that everything is has has been done that needs to be done, so they can go ahead and deliver and and and, uh, and achieve really 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 good performance and service. Uh, touch on it there to, to gather participant feedback. If you can gather that early on, it's really important. I think participants broadly will understand that there's a new new contract, that there will be a few teething problems, as long as you can uh, uh, speak to them in a, in a mature way, I suppose, in, a, in an adult way, and, and identify that and deal with it rapidly, then, then that, that tends to be okay. You don't want that happening for long, but you need to get that process of getting feedback in place all the way through. Um, the contract stipulated anyway, in terms of customer satisfaction um, um, scores and reviews, etc., but you need to build that in and not just be doing it for the sake of uh, of, of, of of taking a box contractually or, or or from a compliance perspective. This is about how you refine, improve, update uh, your delivery. And most of the contracts now have an evaluation built in. Expect some test and learn. 
uh, and, uh, and responsive activity. And that feedback is really critical to pull into that. How you respond to it is then where you, where you really can excel. Make sure the commissioner is happy. Uh, each, each commissioner will have a different approach from, uh, from very hands-on, very detailed assurance uh, to, to more relaxed um, and, and you know, some of the more local contracts maybe are a little bit more relaxed on it and, and depending on if there's existing relationships uh, can be a bit more forgiving. Um, but you need to build your plan really to ensure that you've ticked everything off. Have a really open, positive engagement with your commissioner. Um, and I, I think generally they recognize everyone's trying to do their best. They recognize that a couple of things might be, might be missed but as long as you deal with them quickly um, and that you are uh, you're positive about why you're doing that and how you're engaging with customers, and I think they, they tend to be fine, but it can vary in terms of the individuals you'll get in that space. Um, and hand over to BAU, uh, again, setting the criteria to sign that off, ensuring that there is a formal handover, um, make sure everyone's happy really that everything has been done, that's really important. Uh, the worst scenarios are you just drop something over the fence and they go, what am I supposed to do with this? And then it creates a, you know, a, bit, a bit of tension and, and and challenge. I think this is my last uh, slide pretty much, and then I'll, I'll open it to, to, to questions. Uh, please do put some in the, in the chat. Um, so common pitfalls, a bit of a recap. Well, and I suppose I could have taken this from a positive angle, but you know, I suppose we're all so entrenched in some of these I've looked at in terms of pitfalls. Um, so not starting early enough, waiting until you get a ward and then going, right, what do we do? And um, you know, in simple terms, clearly you got to try and be on the front foot. If there's, if there's a small window of time, be ready, plan, decide on what you're going to invest and really, really hit the ground running and not being clear on what the detail model is at that point. So if you're not clear and you're trying to rework it uh, later in the day, it's going to cause issues and you'll, you'll get confused and then a muddle about it and it won't land. There'll always be tweaks, but fundamentally let's get, get the key thing sorted. Um, what, one thing we see a lot is where there's an over-reliance on one person. So an operational lead who is the a bottleneck uh, as great as I'm sure they, they often are. Uh, but every decision might go through them. Um, you know, uh, things can grind to a halt if you have that scenario. And also they will get totally burnt out as well. So try and build that, uh, build in a spread of, uh, of, of, of individuals and capacity capability in, in all of the stages. Um, don't freestyle your governance. So make sure you've got that structured. Um, you got it running from day one. It's not a, you know, we'll get it sorted in a week or two. Um, really, really, really nail that down and do your do your kickoff as early as you can uh, to get things moving. Um, be careful not to move too fast and then having to rework later. Um, particularly prevalent uh, is an issue on this on, on recruiting staff. If you recruit the wrong people, um, you're going to have to rework that massively. So don't recruit to fill a gap. Make sure you get the best people for the job. Really plan that out uh, and be robust in that and and take the right time to do it and um, because you will absolutely regret it if you don't do that um, and invest in the indu their induction as well i suppose is really important in that too uh, the iep you know has a massive role to play in this a lot of organizations are building iep accreditation into their induction which is a really positive move for the sector um, in the first place though trying to get the right people in uh, is, is really important um, likewise identifying those that just don't quite work quickly and having that performance oversight performance management framework in place that's really clear uh, is important too. Uh, over optimistic IT development timescales, it, it happens every time. Um, the IT team will always go, yeah, we'll be able to do it. Uh, and then it uh, can get more complicated. So really, really kick the tires on that one to make sure it's a realistic plan and there's the right level of investment in there and that you've got contingency built in. And that links into just generally not being really realistic on timescales. You, you've got to hit your key milestones um, because otherwise you, you won't win other contracts. You'll start off poor. You won't get the performance that you uh, that you want to get from day one and you will be chasing your tail all the way through it. So be realistic on those. Look at what the implications are if, if there is a time scale that needs needs to run longer. Um, share that conversation with the commissioner if it's in that point. So be really open on it and work together to, to deal with it. Um, I think I've got one last one just to close on, which is if you have won a contract, do try and celebrate, even for a short period of time. Um, it, it's hard work going through a mobilization. I appreciate uh, if you're not involved in it, what others have to do. Uh, and, uh, and then hopefully uh, it'll, it'll all go well. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Hopefully that's been of use and I'll, I'll open it out for questions. Uh, 
to the group. Okay. So, Helen, Excellent. I'm not sure. Have you read Thank through you. Laura's note? <laughs> yes, I was just going to read it to you. So, um, it, Laura said more of a comment than a question. The pre award planning is critical, but this can be challenging if you're a small chain organization in multiple bids. You are essentially having to plan for all prime contractor outcomes and therefore planning activities need to take into account different staffing structures, different delivery models, locations, varying scales and investment requirements. The number of variable outcomes makes planning incredibly difficult and smaller organisations have to make decisions on how to balance the investment of time and resource before knowing the outcome. Yeah, so I'm sure that's speaking from experience there, Laura. So uh, it's it's a difficult one to nail down. I suppose if you what tends to happen is you have three or four primes that are you you're probably recognised as a really positive provider in that area, and and they're all desperate to have you have you pulled in, and they all have different approaches from an implementation perspective. The core of what they'll need you to do though will be the same. You still will have to set up your premises. You'll have to recruit people. What system they're going to use will vary granted um and how you communicate with them in that pre-award stage is really difficult we've seen lots of different um approaches shall we say on that um it, there's there's little you can do to deal with other than those core things that you know will be the same for all of them is to is to really work on, on being ready for those um and being quite open with the prime as well to say you know there's there's so much we can do in terms of engaging with you in that period and, and and having that conversation but i think generally if they're a positive um prime provider in terms of how they're contracting with you they'll, they'll have some understanding around that granted there's always pressure on the bidding stage etc and uh, they should have some understanding on that and they um and they should also appreciate that actually no matter who wins in that in that particular area um you know you, you'll have to stand up the same thing at the heart of it so you, you know i'd imagine if you're progressing things forward around recruiting for example um that should be able to benefit across whichever prime you end up contracting with so it's not 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 a particularly great answer i suppose in that sense it is a hard it is a hard scenario to be in totally appreciate that but you've, you've got to stay strong on it i think in terms of how you communicate with the primes if there's that many asking you you're probably seen as a really positive uh, supply chain member and you've probably got a strong hand <laughs> Excellent, thank you. So we've had no other questions come in at the moment, um, but a thanks from Laura. So I think it did, it did um, hit the spot that did. And Ethelene says, very clear overview and great toolkit. Thank you for that. So I thought that really was fascinating and, I, uh, fascinating. and I think the thing is, one of the things that really resonated was around setting those realistic time scales so you can make sure you're hitting them, not giving people time scales that they want or you know setting that realistic goal and then sticking to it i suppose then just to, if there's no other questions last thing for me is if, if anyone wants to pick up offline with me i'm happy to happy to you know, have a conversation and give any tips or hints or anything like that so oh, that would be wonderful. please feel free to do that no, no problem Excellent. at all I'm sure well, Helen, you can share yeah brilliant yeah i was gonna say what i'll do then is i will share your email address in the email we send out to everyone and um, i'm sure they will be in touch so thank you Thank you very much for that. And great slides, by the way, um, really informative. Emily says, this is really going to help me develop a robust mobilization, stabilization plan for our organization. Thank you very much. And Carol says, thank you as well. Lot, they're all coming in now saying thank you and really interesting, which it really was. Um, so thank you very much, Fran, for joining us today. Thank you everyone who's joined us with their lunchtime. Before you all do, do disappear off to eat your sandwiches, although you may have because you've not met, most of you haven't had your cameras on, so you may have been eating your lunch. Um, just to let you know about what we've got coming up over in April via the Live Learn Lunch, next week on the 7th of April, we are having a, a low-key webinar around what are the benefits of IEP membership. So for those of you who are members, you may want to join us and just have a chat around what some of the additional member benefits are. For those who are new, you might want to find out a little bit more, so you can join us for that. On the 14th, we have the third in our R an IB series of seeing opportunities and we're going to be looking at and exploring assistive technology so it should be an interesting one to look at what's out there and how can you access it for your um, participants 
On the 21st of April, we've got Bounce Australia joining us to run a session on harnessing the power of motivation. And um, Maria Smith, the founder of Bounce Australia, will help us to explore the different levels of motivation and understand why some people are able to get themselves up and going while others just aren't. Um, so that should be a really interesting one. For those of you who joined us for the Digital Technology Conference, you'll, you'll have really enjoyed um, Maria's session. So do try and join us for that. And on the 28th of April, we have Career Map joining us. And their session is called I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For, which I can't say without hearing the song in my head. So that will be there all afternoon for me now. And this is about um, supporting us with exploring how to find out about career opportunities that exist in sectors that you're not familiar with. Um, we're joined by Sharon Warpole, who's the editor of their Career Mag publication, and she's going to share with us what she does in order to research things when she doesn't really know where to start. So a really effective, I think that one should be interesting. I will be making copious notes again myself. So thanks again, everyone, for that. Do try and join us in the future. Keep an eye on the Learning Network because we have sessions planned all the way through the year. Um, and they're all announced in there. But thank you very much for your time today. And I'll see you on the next session. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.